I'm here with Michael Bouvier from MBW Drums. Tell me a little bit about your company. Um, MBW Drums is something I started just as, you know, something to get me back into playing drums. I had played and toured a good bit in the 90s, uh, played since I was a little kid. And, uh, you know, you slowly, you know, have to pick up a job, paying the bills. Right. And, uh, you know, you blink one day and 10 years has gone by and you haven't touched a drum. Um, during that time, I built a, a good bit of knowledge in, uh, in custom finish work, uh, working with cabinetry and case work. And, uh, you know, we started messing around with some finishes on drums. And, uh, and it just, just kind of it clicked. It was meant to be. Uh, we started looking at, you know, there's dozens and dozens of, of companies out there you know they're doing flashy stuff and and we wanted to make sure what we do you know sounded good as well so by by marriage and you know just years of, of of drum geeking and you know the things i've kind of picked and gleaned from what i liked you know we blended it into the sound that we have and uh and the look that we have and you know, came out with something that felt like you know i was ready to, to put out for the public i noticed uh you know i see a lot of drums i review drums for drum magazine and yeah. They're all textured, and they're, they're, a lot of them are, look distressed. Um, other ones, you know, have uh, a lot of interesting, uh, you know, three-dimensional qualities to the, the surface. We, How do you uh, do that? It's it's all done by hand. You know, the the, the cabinet finish work and the furniture finish work I've done. Um, you know, I, working with decorators and designers, you know, working in custom homes, a lot of times they would call me in to do finishes. They want uh, authentic relic look you know they want this piece to look like something or they bring me something they have brought from a salvage that hey this has a certain amount of patina and age you know we want you to build some more stuff to go to it and finish it to match that started doing MBW drums, I didn't really see it that much to the extent you know, people were weathering hardware and doing some stuff, but they really weren't taking it to the to the woods. So that's that's what we did. Um, now at the same time, we you know we can do some high gloss crazy stuff, and you know, we enjoy doing what people you know typically associate with a drum finish. You know the high gloss, the, the polyester. Um, you know the you know it's, it's there as well, but we have the most fun you know doing doing that signature vintage look. And and it seems like the first one we did, you know people kind of go through the website and they see that oh yeah you know that's that's what we got to do so you're ending up with a, a you know a drum that's got you know portions of it are relicked out and beat out and weathered out and then the other portions of it are, are you know masked off and wet sanded and buffed to a high gloss mm -hmm. finish so it's it's almost like each drum is a is a sample catalog of what we might could do you Tell know, me about that uh, nautical snare drum you showed me. That was a uh, remarkable workmanship. That and very unique look. That was the brainchild of uh, of uh, a good friend, and partner of mine, uh, Brett Sims. Um, he does all the wood burning you've seen on MBW drums. Um, you know, it's something that he wanted to do. So you know, we took a we took a you know 18 inch deep tin ply shell, cut it down. Uh, Brett did all the wood burning. He actually did all the hand carving. Uh, and you know we glued it up, made the Tony ply out of it, and then I did all the finish work on it. Um, the lugs and the throw off we had custom made uh, in the states here, um, and it's just you know it's just been one of those pieces where you do a certain amount of work on it, and it goes back on the shelf, and you kind of think about what you want to do, and think about what you do, and then you do some more work on it, and you know uh, it was exciting to kind of bring it out here to Chicago and just throw it out there and see people's reaction. So that kit I saw with the uh, diamonds mm -hmm. embedded, and or uh, you know some of the it like sparkles combined with uh, you know distress look mm -hmm. combined with um, well you know tell yeah. me about tell me about the, that drum kit. Uh, the kit was co-designed by the guy I built it for, who is uh, his name is Matt Coons. He plays for a band called Hundredth. Uh, and Matt had played one of my kits at a venue in Greenville, uh, the channel. Uh, and it was one of the long, relicked out, you know, kits with uh, the full length tube lugs, the world, you know, Revolutionary War era wood hoops. And he's like, man, I want to do something, you know, similar to this. So we actually kicked around designs for months and, you know, he couldn't settle on what he wanted to do. And, uh, you know, he sent me some pictures about how many these diamonds, you know, and immediately my mind went to that old Leedy kit, you know, being a, just, you know, the vintage drums, you know, it's just been the thing that I've, I've always loved playing. You know, I toured on an old 60s Ludwig kit and uh, had some WFL stuff in my collection. And and uh, so that kit is kind of a modern twist on that that old full dress look. And each of the diamonds are, are hand carved into the kit, even the little one inch, you know, deep ones. 
uh, and each of those in itself is a different finish. It's a you know a base coat with a flake coat and multiple layers of clear coat, and you know each diamond had to be masked off and wet sanded and buffed out, while leaving you know the the, the raw wood relic look on the rest of the kit. So it really you know there's a lot of contrast going on. Thank you for your time, Michael. Thank you. Okay.